Matthew 23, verse 25. You know, I've, you probably heard me say this as well. There are two things in Matthew 23 that Jesus appreciated in the Pharisees. He didn't denounce the, everything in the Pharisees. Matthew 23 is a full of denunciation. You Pharisees are like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. But Jesus was not a person who could never see good in those who were bad in many areas. If there were one or two good spots in those bad people, he would point it out. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But the rest, 98% is all hypocrisy and rubbish. Just like that in this chapter. First of all, the doctrines of the Pharisees were absolutely according to the laws of Moses. And Jesus gave credit for that. He told his disciples in verse 2 and 3, the Pharisees are seated in the chair of Moses. Everything they tell you to do, do. Now, would Jesus say that today? Everything that the Roman Catholics tell you to do, do. Or everything that the Jehovah's Witnesses tell you to do, do. Or everything that the Baptists tell you to do, do. No. But he did say that about the Pharisees. Everything. Not 90%. Everything they tell you to do, do, which means good. the Lord is certifying that doctrines are all absolutely right. Jesus could see where something was good. Second, verse 25. These are the two things, positive things. Verse 25, you scribes and Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and the dish. Isn't that a good thing? To have a good external testimony? They were not living in adultery and theft and sin. He gave them credit. The external part of your life is very good. Your external testimony before men is excellent. Your problem is that inside is full of robbery and self-indulgence. Of course, that made them hypocrites. So here was Jesus who could appreciate what was right. And he may say that now. The, way, the reason I mention these two things is because we could ask ourselves, is, is Jesus commending us for two things being in this church? The Lord says, you are the people who have really understood the new covenant. Unlike so many other people who call themselves Christians, you have really understood the new covenant. You understood it so well that you can explain it to others. That's the first commendation he gave to the Pharisees. It doesn't make you any different from the Pharisees. No. Second, your external testimony is perfect. The Lord say that about you. It doesn't make you any different from the Pharisees. And yet you may, if you're honest, you may be inwardly congratulating yourself for these two things. I know the new covenant. My external life is so clear. Even everybody in the church appreciates it. Those are the two things Jesus appreciated in the Pharisees. What is the thing he's looking for? What is the inside of the cup? What are your thoughts like? Even if you're, even your wife does not know impurity in your thoughts but Jesus does you may appear to be free from the love of money what about in your thoughts what do you think about most of the time you worship what you think about most of the time I don't mean in your secular job and things you have to do like your earthly tasks as a homemaker or my wife or Husband, I'm not talking about those things, but where, when your spare time, where do your thoughts go? Your thoughts are important. That's the inside of the cup. Secondly, the inside of the cup is your attitudes towards people. Towards that tax collector, like we saw in Luke 18, or towards somebody else. Your attitude, which you never speak about. It never comes out of your mouth. You're very careful to hide those wrong attitudes that you have towards somebody, maybe in the church or towards other people. Your unconverted relatives, you'll never draw them to Christ by having wrong attitudes towards them. Attitudes. 
attitudes towards people in the church, outside the church, that's the inside of the cup. What is my attitude towards money? Even your wife won't know that. Only you know it. What your attitude towards money. You can convince everybody that you're a person free from the love of money, but you know in your heart what it is like. What is your attitude towards men, towards pretty women? Only you know. Attitudes, attitudes, attitudes. And the third is motives. That's another area of the inside of the cup that nobody can see. You can do the best thing in the world and the Lord will throw it in the trash can because the motive behind it was impure, unchristlike. You can preach a very clever sermon and the Lord will say reject it because the motive was not to bless the people or to glorify God. It was something for yourself. One last verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. I think this was a memory verse for some children. I, I heard them speaking, I think, in RLC or somewhere. Whatever you do, and he takes the most elementary thing that we do every day, eating and drinking, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. You can meditate on that verse for a long, long time and get a lot of light on your inner life. Brothers and sisters, I'm only telling you areas where I have sought to judge myself all these years. And it's made my life a better life and a closer walk with the Lord. God bless you.